Well, uh, certainly the raising status of mathematics due to especially the applications of mathematics to navigation, cartography and ballistics uh, made mathematics more interesting even in the universities where, generally speaking, professors of mathematics got a much lower wage compared to professors of theology or, or philosophy, for instance. But uh, even in the universities there was uh, uh, a new interest in the discipline, uh, broadly understood, and uh, new chairs were founded both in Oxford and in Cambridge. In Oxford the Savilian Chair of Geometry and Astronomy, and in Cambridge the Lucasian Chair of Mathematics. Uh, in 1663, Isaac Barrow was appointed as first uh, Lucasian professor of mathematics in Cambridge. And uh, one of his uh, pupils, we think, uh, Isaac Newton, was soon to get the chair in 1669. Um, the new mathematics that was uh, of, of interest to people working in in, in the universities in this period was uh, um, what was called common analysis. This is, uh, uh, we would call it algebra, and it was indeed also called algebra in that period uh, from time to time, and um, um, one of the key texts that uh, were interesting was uh, Descartes' geometry. Descartes was active uh, uh, we know perhaps him as a, as a philosopher, but he was an outstanding mathematician. And in 1637, he published uh, a, a little book uh, entitled La Géométrie. Now here, Descartes taught how one could study the properties of plane curves by means of uh, um, algebraic equations, actually we would call them polynomial equations in two variables. Uh, the book was uh, in French and it was uh, difficult to read and um, uh, a mathematician uh, called Franz van Schulten, uh, who knew Descartes well, uh, translated into, ger into, <laughs> into Latin the geometry. Uh, there were two editions and uh, one in 1649 and one in 1659-61, and uh, Van Schulten and his pupils uh, annotated uh, the geometry, uh, uh, um, adding notes, ending new results, so there was, so to speak, a Dutch school that was very important at the mid of uh, the 17th century. Um, this uh, new technique by Descartes allowed the study of plane curves and we have to realize that the objects to which uh, mathematicians who wanted to work uh, at the forefront of research were not functions as we m might say today. Um, they devoted themselves especially to curves, to plane curves. The, uh, and uh, um, Descartes was able to study what he called the geometrical curves. That is, curves that um, uh, are defined by polynomial equations. And he uh, didn't, uh, he rejected from the geometry quite explicitly, what he called mechanical curves. That is, curves that cannot be defined by a polynomial equation in two unknowns. Uh, when uh, these two unknowns are conceived of as the coordinates in a Cartesian uh, reference system. Now, it is true that in the geometry there are no Cartesian axes, but uh, uh, Descartes had uh, his own way to define what we call the Cartesian coordinates of a curve. Um, he rejected mechanical curves such as the spiral, for instance, uh, 
another curb that he didn't want to accept in his, uh, uh, in his method was the cycloid, the curve traced by a point on, a, on the circumference of a circle that rolls along a line without sliding. Um, so uh, there was uh, an interest in England to uh, update uh, the teaching of mathematics in the universities by developing uh, uh, Cartesian methods.